I think the industry itself has a role to play. Um, we've got to make it known um, that this is an industry that's in transformation. It's changing dramatically. Hello and welcome to the AARN podcast. And this is a very special episode of our podcast because this is devoted to International Women's Day. I'm joined as ever by Blake Boland. Hello, Blake. Good afternoon. And as you might have guessed, neither of us are women, so we will not be doing very much talking in this one. This one is dedicated to some of the leading lights in the Irish motoring industry. We have... CEOs, we have dealer principals, and we have some stale staff as well. And we are going to devote that to them. So let's hear from them. Blake, where did we start with this? Who? What was the first question that we put to some of these uh, women in the industry? Yeah, well, as I said, we had a good selection of people and we got to speak to them. Both of us did, did some interviews for this. So I think the great place for us to start was just what attracted them to the industry. Let's, let's go back to the start here. Let's go back to the beginning and chart this path forward and what it was like for people. So we put the question to them, what attracted you to work in the car industry? How did you find yourself here? Time to hear from Shelley Curran and Katie Hegarty, sales staff in Blackwater Motors. Uh, yeah, I stumbled into it. Um so I had just come back from Australia and was meant to be going back again, um, but kind of ended up staying put and went for a receptionist role here um, down in Skibbereen. And then I did the junior sales program that Blackwater Motors do on an annual basis. Um, and here I am. So, yeah, I didn't know anything about cars, um, knew the types that I liked, but knew nothing about them. So it was a real, um, a real eye opener, to be fair. So similarly, I suppose to Katie that works with me, I was actually a beautician, qualified beautician first. Loved the training of it and everything, but hated working in it. So applied for a receptionist job here as well. And one of my colleagues was going on maternity leave. So they asked me, would I mind kind of going through brochures and stock listings with customers and just showing them to the car? And then sales executive would meet with them after once they were finished with a customer and like that somehow ended up in sales unknown to myself. But here I am three and a half years later um, through the junior sales program and the IBT Volkswagen training as well. So, Paddy, I grew up with three brothers. Here's Carla Wenzel. And one of the games we used to play when we were kids is what brand of car is that? So I always loved cars um, and decided that it would be interesting to pursue a, a career um, with cars. And when I went for um, an interview in the industry, I clearly remember um, the gentleman who interviewed me. He said, it's a man's world. And I said, that's OK, I'm up. I'm up for it. I'm game. Alicia O'Connor, head of agency sales transformation for Volkswagen Group Ireland. Well, somebody gave me a good piece of advice um, as a student back in, uh, that wasn't today or yesterday now, to try and mix your hobby or interest with your job and you'll never work a day in your life. So that was always kind of at play when trying to decide what direction to go. And then my dad actually um, has a real passion for nice cars, like more, more admiring nice cars and uh, driving them if he got the opportunity. And I think it definitely rubbed off on me. Hi, I'm Zoe Bradley, and I'm Head of Marketing Communications and Corporate Affairs at Toyota Ireland. Funny enough, actually, I think it was a bit random, actually, that I kind of came into the car industry. And from talking to other people, it seems to be a little bit of a theme. So my background was always in creative advertising, and I had done that both in Dublin and I had done it in Sydney. I was just back from Sydney. So for me, when I came back, um, this marketing role came up in Toyota. And actually, it was really the strength of the brand that kind of drew me to it. And I think for the car industry as a whole, there's a lot of really well-established brands there, which are really exciting and a lot of people know of it. So it's um, a real draw for the car industry in itself. Um, also as well, I think being in the car industry now, uh, it's certainly a really, really exciting time, I think, for the industry in general. There's lots of change, there's new electrification, um, there's lots of mobility things happening. So when you're actually in the industry, you realize that, you know, no year is the same. And I've been in the car industry for over six years now. And I can absolutely say that every year has been completely different. There's a new challenge. Um, and as an industry, it's a very future focused industry. Like we're always trying to gauge what the next big technology is going to be, how people's behavior is going to change. Um, and obviously there was a big move to digitalization 
as a result of COVID and things like that. So definitely constantly changing. Um, and I think so that probably didn't draw me into the industry because I was unaware of it. Um, but definitely one of the benefits of being in the industry. Some interesting points there. Following on from that, we asked them, what barriers do you think exist for women entering the motor industry? Cathy Malone, dealer principal in Malone's of Drogheda. I think um, you're dead right. Definitely you'll see the numbers reflect that it's quite male dominated. I think it's 85% of the workforce is um, men. And uh, I think starting the main barrier, I think it's a perception thing. Women see it obviously as, in my opinion or my experience, women see that there's a lot more men there and maybe they don't feel it's as um, women friendly. And I'm kind of here to quash the myth and I know you have other ladies as well chatting with you. But um, I think representation is a big thing. I think if you can see women in not just support roles, but leadership roles um, in the workshop and also on the sales floor as well, it kind of starts the thought that this job could work for me. I'd say um, career progression is going to be a massive thing for anyone entering any industry. People, Women, men need to know that there is good pro- career progression in it and there's good training and development available to them to keep them going through their um, career. And obviously another thing is no matter what all of us say and as much as we love our jobs, we all have getting paid at the end of the day. And I suppose there's competitive salaries as well um, in the motor industry. So I'd say they're kind of good things to highlight to women as well. But I think the main thing at the minute is um, representation for me. Yeah, um, I was thinking about this and I think the biggest one is the perception of the industry. Uh, it's certainly, and I suppose it is quite a male dominated industry. You know, even in the last six years, I've absolutely seen that change and and definitely more women are coming into it, which is really fantastic to see. Um, But I think when you as a woman are looking at the industry, you think, oh, it's very tech. I'm not you know, sure of the tech parts of a car. It's not for me. Um, So I think that perception is a really big barrier. Um, I think women naturally kind of gravitate and feel more comfortable talking about things that they know. Um, And equally, I think this is something that probably happens way back when when people are kids and the girls get the dolls and the boys get the cars and I think that's um, kind of reiterated throughout childhood and onwards so it's certainly not something that you can just say okay well now this perception doesn't exist Um, a second thing I think as well is that it being a male dominated industry I think a lot of women think that when they come in they have to be really you know forthright and pushy and you know maybe change who they are a little bit whereas when you're in the industry it's not really like that at all I think um, when you're in it it is very welcoming I think um, as an industry everyone does want it to be more gender balanced people want that diverse voice Um, But definitely, I think that perception of you have to be that hard person to get by in a male industry is is definitely a really big barrier. I think, Paddy, um, I don't think there's particular barriers for women in entering the motor industry. For me, um, as I said, someone gave me the tip to try and mix hobby or interests with your job. And it never entered my head that I couldn't go and work in the motor industry because I was female. Um, I think sometimes these barriers, we create them ourselves. Um, as I said, for me, they never existed. But I do think, you know, um, I've heard the phrase a number of times of late, not necessarily relating to motor, but if you can't see it, you can't be it. And I suppose by association, the motor industry um, is maybe a little less visible to females or women. Um, and potentially we're not appealing enough to women as a career choice to come and and work in the motor industry and maybe as an industry we have a bit of a job to do um, an education piece to try and alter um, the current dynamic which is probably a little more in favour of men. So there's definitely some barriers remaining and it's it's going to evolve, of course, over time, Paddy. But uh, we wanted to talk about the retail end. Uh, what sort of feedback are they hearing about how female customers perceive the sales process? Um, no, like Shelley said, it's kind of, a lot of people would, like, would kind of think that we wouldn't know much about cars, you know. Um, and it's, you know, it's typically like, you know, especially when it comes to the mechanical side of things, you know, they'd kind of be like, oh, you know, could you find it, whether it's this? And we'd give them an answer, but, you know, but it's it's really like it, that's when, when you know your product and stuff like that, it comes through, like, and you can kind of, 
surprise them a bit, you know. But we'd have a lot that would say myself and Shelley sit beside each other and we'd have a lot of like that, say someone coming in and they'd say about the salesman thing. And they'd be so shocked to see two women in sales, like not just one, two. They'd be like, they're like, Jesus, it's mad to see, you know, the two women in sales, you know. Um, but no, it's, you know, like, I suppose it's a thing down here, especially like, you know, we'd have a lot of the older generation that would be like our customer base is a lot of older people, you know, going into kind of that stage of their life. And they, you know, like that, you kind of laugh it off and just kind of get your product knowledge across and stuff like that, you know. And then people have said to us that they'd only deal with a saleswoman after. So yeah. there you go. We're more trustworthy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the main thing that we find is people... I suppose it's just kind of people assume that it's a sales man, not a sales woman. Um, and they kind of look at us females as if we're the receptionist, you know, and they'd come in and they'd be like, any salesmen around? And we're kind of like, oh, no, but there's a lovely saleswoman here, if you don't <laughs> mind. Um, and to be fair, people do laugh it off. You get the odd one, all right, that would be kind of hesitant to deal with you, you know. Um, but other than that, not at all. Like, it's it's it was majorly female based here in Skibbereen, there was actually just three females, no males, but we now have, we now have one male, but, and two females, but it's, it's, that'd be kind of the only thing really, I suppose, you know, they kind of think maybe we don't know much about cars or, you know, it's just kind of that typical salesman they look for, but, but we get through it, you know? Yeah, I suppose. To kind of, I chatted, as I said, uh, to our sales team on the floor there, and I just kind of had a quick look back to see, like most people, we do um, customer surveys. And the one thing I noticed was a lot of the people buying the cars are women, and most of the people who are doing the um, customer surveys are women as well. Um, so from the chatting to the team on the floor, women seem to be maybe a more loyal customer. So they're more into relationships. Um, as our experience, if they've built a relationship with people here, whether it's in the sales or the service end, um, they're a lot more likely to keep coming back and um, establish it. Now, women who, the female customers that are coming in here, they're enjoying the process. I think they want, like anywhere, men or women, you want to be listened to, understood and appreciated. And um, I think once all those boxes are ticked, you know, more than anyone else, as I said, their loyal customer base will follow and referrals is also another big thing that I think women um, really enjoy as well. So if they're getting referrals from their friends, oh, I went in there, they treated me really well, they had a nice product, all of those things, um, women seem to appreciate that more as well. So I would say referrals and just a positive environment to come into and feel listened and supported uh, would be a big thing. Interesting points there, but you know, one area as well that we touched on, which I wasn't sure about myself, was do the female audience prioritise different things as a consumer when it comes to purchasing a car? Um, as a consumer, I would say females probably might be looking for reliability because, you know, you're literally coming from my background where you didn't want to break down on the road. Certainly reliability, safety, safety for your kids would have been considerations. But I'm pretty sure that males value those things as well. Um, in general, I would say no. You know, everyone coming in is looking for a nice car in my price range, um, has the space, has the features. But definitely when you dig a little deeper, I think women are, are very, very practical. It, it's not really about what's under the bonnet, which I think men are more kind of interested in. And this is absolutely a generalization now. <laughs> um, but they're kind of more about, um, do I have enough space in the boot? Um, you know, if it's a mom, they're saying, do I have the eyes of fix? Exactly, yeah. Whereas um, the guys might be a bit more, what's the engine size? How does it work? So there definitely is a difference when you, when you dig a little bit more. Really interesting then, Paddy, just to get that overall perspective. But we also wanted to look forward to the future a little bit and just ask what can be done to attract more female talent into the motor industry? I think, um, I suppose overall in lots of industries, um, you can see that, you know, lots of industries, not just the motor industry, become kind of more um, associated with males. And, you know, research has been done where at an entry level, the gender balance might be 50-50. But as, you know, you look through higher positions within a company, that 50-50 balance that existed at the start doesn't necessarily exist as you progress through the organisation. 
Um, and I think that's potentially down to societal um, barriers, not necessarily linked to the motor industry specifically. In Ireland, I think, you know, the cost of childcare, for example, we're, we have the third highest childcare costs, I think, within the EU. Um, that poses challenges for families who, you know, both parents are working. Um, it makes it quite challenging. It makes it very costly. And that certainly puts pressure. And I think more often than not, um, sometimes we see females like exiting different industries. Um, so I think, you know, from a motor industry perspective, I think it's more important that we start attracting talent into our organization from, um, from that entry point. And I think there's a, definitely an education piece to be done there. Um, you know, in, within the Vogue Second Group, we have an internship program and that's proved to be very successful trying to get you know, students into our organization taking a year out of college. Um, it's certainly a value add for us in terms of additional hands on deck. From an intern's point of view, there's an add-on because they're gaining a year's work experience. Um, and for us, it's a great source of future recruitment. And I think that's something within the Volkswagen Group that we definitely try and achieve. And we have like a, a great cohort of of female interns in our so intake. Okay, if you can see it, you can be it. And yeah, it's it's making ourselves and getting our voice out there that we are a really dynamic industry, uh, an industry that has a huge amount to offer to both males and females. Um, naturally, you know, we've female customers, we've male customers, so I can't I can't see why we can't try and attract more females to work in the motor industry. Make sure that the male colleagues are involved in the process as well. It's not men against women. It is about a collective group of people working together. And um, for us here, it's about mentors, whether men or women. Um, if you know any girls that you, or ladies that you think might be interested in a different job or career, mention it to them. Say it to them. Just explain, not even explain, just I would say recommend them if they want to talk to someone like me or anyone that you're interviewing, pick up the phone because we need um, to make sure that everybody is feeling like they're going to be engaged with and um, would definitely be something um, I think. And the other thing, it's not something I've experienced, but I've looked um, uh, from past jobs and I would say the language that's used in job descriptions there's a survey done where it says men look at job descriptions and see the 80% of things they can do and women see the things they can't. But they say a lot of the language is male focused. And um, I would say we probably have to need to look at what way we're wording job descriptions as well to make it appeal to both men and women. Um, that would definitely be something I would think would probably be a good place to start. Zoe Bradley. Um, yeah, I, I think again, and I kind of touched on it, I think it's it's from the very beginning. Um, I definitely think working with schools more, with colleges, um, and from a younger age to, to, to show that, you know, women are involved in the car industry, they're welcome in the car industry, because I think from a very early age, you're, you're kind of told what you should go into. Um, so I think as well, there was an amazing campaign, uh, I think it's from women in sports. It was the 20 by 20 run a couple of years ago. And the idea was, if you can't see her, you can't be her. So I absolutely think more visibility is great. And I do think in the last few years, there is more visibility. There's more, you know, even in our network, more female <clears throat> dealer principals, more female salespeople, um, more female journalists. So all that is really, really good. Um, and something I think that can definitely be encouraged. If, if someone told me that I would end up selling cards or that I'd have a career in sales a couple of years ago, I literally would have laughed and said, not a hope. And even when I first came in here, I didn't think that I would be, I suppose, do you know, it's, it is a difficult job. You do come across all kinds of everything, really, you know, and you do have to have thick skin because you know yourself dealing with the public. It, it's It's one of the hardest jobs ever, really, you know, you never know what's coming towards you. And... Um, but I suppose like with, with Volkswagen, especially like the training that's provided is second to none, really like and the product, everything. Once there's a new product out, we're trained on it online, even with COVID, like a lot of the time before it would have been like, say, visits to like Kilishi House and these kind of places and you'd get a lovely day out and stuff. But it's all kind of online now. Um, but, you know, like you can 
like me and Katie are a prime example of that, I suppose, where you can, you know, we have we've changed, I suppose, our career path we thought we would take. And we're here now, you know, Um I don't know, maybe this podcast will will open people's <laughs> eyes you know, to, to, to females in the industry. But even our other branches, there's been a lot more kind of like, say, one of the showroom hosts in our Cork City branch. She's now in sales. They have. But they our managers are always saying that they find it really hard to actually get um, female sales executives. Like it's mostly males that would apply for the jobs. I think the industry itself has a role to play. Um, we've got to make it known um, that this is an industry that's in transformation. It's changing dramatically. Electric cars, autonomous cars, mobility services. These are exciting. They're very, very exciting. The motor industry is going to change more in the next 30 years than it's changed in decades. And so we've got to make sure that um, women are, are aware of it um, from all levels, from school, from tertiary, we've got to make sure that the industry gets um, to be able to pitch itself and to make itself available and to share what it can offer. Because I can say with absolute confidence that for those women that are in the industry and in Volkswagen Group Island, we've got at least 25% of our staff are women. It's a very rewarding career. That's it for this week's special edition of the AA Ireland podcast. I hope you enjoyed listening to those leading women in the car industry as much as we enjoyed doing those interviews. Uh, Blake, you enjoyed those pieces, uh, I'd imagine, especially the two girls in uh, in Skibbereen who who sound like they're great fun. Yeah, full of life and great just to see that that level of enthusiasm and and how they're settling into the industry and enjoying their time there. I think it's, it's what's very clear from the discussions is that if you don't see it, you can't be it. I think there needs to be more in terms of examples. And I think these women are amazing examples of how to do well in in what is a very rewarding industry it's one that you know we're all close to and it's one we like ourselves so hopefully these people can uh, really show the path and the way forward for for uh, for more women to get involved absolutely and we all have a part to play in that Paddy. Okay, well, that's it for this week. We will be back again as ever. If you want to check us out, you can always find us on the AA blog, on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok. We're all over the internet, uh, especially talking about free public transport at the moment, but more of that in the coming weeks. That's it from me this week and from Blake Boland. Thank you very much for listening. Chat to you next time.